We create a system and we force all these brilliant, diverse minds through a maze of controls and limitations and tests so they can come out the other end and say, here's my degree. But we aren't made that way. We're made enormously creative and diverse. And if we can't create a system that embraces that diversity and supports it and releases that brilliance, then we're not allowing young people to maintain or reclaim their genius. Really what we're trying to do is create a space for everyone to come together and learn. So it's not even about us teaching you, it's just about creating the platform to bring people together and honestly something beautiful growing out of that. The deepest level of change and the most resilient and sustainable way of maintaining that change comes from affecting the values and the culture of an organization. We have to start to retrain our schema to think about the world in different ways, to think about people in different ways, to think about students in different ways, organizations and organizational change. I like to link uh, sustainability to community development and community improvement, and I like to link those things to educational achievement. And what I have found is that when you get young people engaged, engagement is the critical piece, right? And once you get young people really engaged, what you see is an uptick in achievement. And once folks are achieving, then you see uh, an increase in post-secondary transitions. I found with anything, and it's very true in the green building movement, what you really focus on tends to happen. If you design and build correctly, you increase human health and productivity, teacher retention, test scores, while you reduce operating costs. What school board wouldn't like that? We've really tried to give people uh, a little piece of how to work and think in a systemic way get some success in that so that then they'll want to use that more and that tool is really useful at many different scales for many different things and it's one of the beauties of patterns is that they're applicable at different scales at different media. Our responsibility on some level we'll know whether we succeed or not is this those kids that come through us are operating and thinking differently about the problems that we solve. If we just send another generation out that has continued to think <coughs> you know, about, you know, scarcity and just get your own, that we have not succeeded. You've got to fall in love with trying. You know, I want to get caught trying. I just challenge you to do one thing, meet the kids where they're at. It's hard to ask a kid <laughs> to do something that's beyond their sustainable vision when their sustainable vision is sustenance. Eating and showing up today, that's their sustainable vision. Washing their clothes by hand so they can make it to school the next day. If that's their sustainable vision, it's hard for you to get them out of that to something else. I don't think a child can really learn unless they are happy and unless they feel loved. And I also think that people can't be passionate about their environment and the areas around them if they're not happy and in love with themselves. I think what we're doing here is really all about that. It's a love for the environment, a love for um, our earth, and also in doing that a love for, for the, the child and having the child learn to love themselves. In many ways, I'm a farmer. But I'm a people farmer, and what am I really farming? Students. I'm growing kids, and I believe that we can harvest hope and cultivate minds to grow something greater. Not only will we take the food from there, plant it in our beds, but potentially into the future when an open-air market um, is across the street, uh, selling things and teaching entrepreneurship and responsibility and accountability with our kids. Because it's not about test scores. You know, I know everyone wants to talk about that, but for me, it's not about test scores. It's not about yeah, it is about academics, but what it's about is the human experience and giving these kids an opportunity to be a part of something and take care of something and have that responsibility and take ownership. Our students are now engaged in activities that directly relate to good stewardship of the environment. Looking at our facilities and energy use, we've recently installed a wind turbine and our middle school students are now engaged in a renewable energy project at the seventh grade level. All seventh grade students go through it. And what's happening is it's becoming a culturally accepted practice that sustainability, energy usage, and how we treat 
our facility and how we interact with our facility, how it impacts learning, are all very important to learning as a whole and how we create citizens for our country and for our world. It's like you're looking on the bright side and we really can make a difference in, and it really is possible to shift the culture and the paradigm. That's been hugely um, releasing for me, I guess is a term I want to use. And I think the, the Green School movement that all of you are part of, and the Green Curriculum movement, is, is gaining momentum. It's everywhere now. And what, what's, what's really cool about Pittsburgh is this area in Western Pennsylvania is such a leader uh, nationally in all this. So you're part of a big movement. You may not see it, but from outside, uh, it is apparent. So thanks to all of you for what you do. This program has really changed the way I looked at teaching, um, change in and of itself, and working with my students. I came into the program thinking I was just going to get some information on green buildings and cleaning products and how to make a difference and I came away with a whole different mindset and a way to live my life and to influence my students in a way to live their life in a positive way. I think it's really valuable to have this ability to step away from the day-to-day -day in a school it can be really difficult and to be able to raise up and give this time to reflect and hold those difficult questions and think about what our future could be. Without this opportunity, I don't know if I'd be able to have that vision. When we first came into the program, uh, we were more or less like, uh, you know, we're already doing this stuff, so what are they going to teach us? Well, let me tell you, I've learned so much and there's so much more to learn. You have no idea what you're, what you're missing here. It's, it's, it's in the, unbelievable. And it, you know what, it's our earth, it's our environment, and it's our students. And we want to keep it clean and healthy for them to learn and our faculty to teach and my people to work. My mind just went, we can really think big, you know, and nothing, there's no limits. The only limit is ourselves. That's it.